Good morning. Let's take a drink of my, my drink. Mm. So good. For those who do not know, this, I'm going to tell you, is the best. It's the best. It is the best. Okay? I have a cup of coffee in the morning. Yes, that is true. But then after that, I have two green two green mm -hmm. tea bags, three sweet and lows, three honey and lemon cough drops. That's the key. And lemon juice. And today I added one of those um, emergency orange emergency packets in there. <sighs> Listen, the honey and lemon cough drops sort of melt in there. So when you sip it, you have like a little bit of a, like a little bit of a, I don't know. It's just delicious. I love it. Okay. Let's do a little song. <coughs> For by grace, do, 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 you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of yourselves now, it is a gift of God, not as a result of works, that no one should boast, no one should boast now, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, I'm saved till the end of time, I'm saved by His grace, I'm saved, do, 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 do. You're welcome. Listen, putting verses, um, I'm, I'm, I'm liking my hair today. I have it half up, you know. I'm bringing up the big, you know, 80s, whatever. I like it. Um, anyway, this is how I remember Bible verses. is because growing up, we went to camp and they would put Bible verses to song and stuff. And so that's how I remember them. So, I mean, there's a bunch of them. Um. Let's see, there's four by grace, there's um, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man, and God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide a way of escape also, <laughs> that you may be able to endure it, that you may be able to endure it. Put them, to, put them to music. Moving on. Today's verse is Romans 2.29. So let's read it. It says, and this is my translation, the New American Stand, I don't even know, but this is what my Bible says. It says, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter, the letter of the law, and his praise is not from man, but from God. So in chapter 2, Paul is basically sort of chastising, but kind of the Jews a little bit, the people he's writing to, because they were very militant about keeping the law, right? The law of Moses, the letter of the law, and a lot of self-righteousness and a lot of hypocrisy about it, because no one can keep the letter of the law perfectly no one and this is the reason we needed Jesus right so he's basically letting them know that no one can keep the law right keeping the law is impossibly and it's only by circumcising it was a really you know big deal circumcision whatever but it's it's um by circumcising the flesh like by dying to ourself and removing that part of us and walking with God right? Through Jesus Christ. And that's the only way, right? Grace. We're saved by grace and not by works. And that no one can keep the letter of the law, right? And he also was saying that, um, let's see, he also speaks to the self-righteous Jews that they should have been lights helping other people but they feel that they're special right and he was saying the thing is that without Jesus Jew and Gentile alike without Jesus you're going to be judged just the same as any other pagan pagan beliefs and worship were uh, really big you know they had a lot of temples and a lot of um, worshiping to other gods little g 
And so he was saying that regardless if you're Jew or Greek, if you don't have Jesus and you don't have the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, that you're going to be judged the same as the pagan people. And for the Jews, keeping the letter of the law made them feel like that was going to save them. And so this whole chapter two is basically explaining that that's not the case, that no one can keep the letter of the law perfectly. And that's the only way is to die to yourself and sometimes daily, every day, not sometimes, die to yourself and to walk with God. And that metaphor of circumcision is removing the worldly flesh of who we used to be and that we've raised, been raised to walk a new life, like the, the um, image of baptism, right, is that you are dying to self right, and identifying with Christ in his death, and that when you come out of the water, you're being raised to walk a new life, right? Baptism comes from the Greek word baptisto, which means to submerse, right? It doesn't mean to sprinkle. <laughs> it means to submerse nugget for you um and he was saying that we're only saved by grace right and the other part of this that i really liked was that he was saying that our salvation should have fruit like our old life should be just that our oh i'm looking at my notes our old life and if we're a christian we should be bearing fruit now Salvation doesn't come from works. The, the, look at the thief on the cross, you know, and he said, you know, to Jesus, can, will you, can I be with you and, you know, will you save me, basically? And the, Jesus was like, you know, this, tonight, you know, you'll be with me and my father in paradise. And he didn't work out, you know, work his way. It was only by grace. But after you're saved, after you know Jesus, your life should look different. You should have fruit. And the fruits are things like love, compassion, mercy, kindness, goodness, like forgiveness. Your life should not look the same as it did before. You know, people should be able to know that you are different. They should be able to see that something has changed about you. You're more forgiving. You're more compassionate. You're more careful about what goes in your brain. You work out your faith with the fruits and the changing and the sanctification over time of constantly getting better and better and closer and closer to Jesus, right? And that should be evident because you're saved. I think sometimes people say, oh, well, I'm saved. But they don't really have a walk with God. They don't know what that looks like. They have no fruit. You have no idea that they've changed. Nothing is different in their life. <laughs> and you're like, the thing that makes me sad about that is not because I'm, I think they're not saved. I don't. I, only God knows a man's heart. The thing that makes me sad about that is that they don't know the joy and the peace that passes understanding that comes with walking with God every day. They don't know the closeness that God wants with them. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to walk it out. They don't know why it's important. And as a result, they're asleep in the light. And as a result, they walk through life paralyzed, uneffective, and unfavored, unblessed, un, you know, they've got salvation, but they don't know all the joy and the blessing that comes with seeking God every day when you pray and you you have moments with him where he shows you stuff and he's like my baby that's my boy you know that's my girl it, that's the part that makes me sad and i don't know if it comes from i'm i'm really blessed in the sense that i was raised with parents that love jesus and we went to church and my dad my father led me to christ when i was four years old I've never not known him. Now, I've been rebellious. It's called my 20s. 
and I have made terrible decisions. It's called my 20s and my 30s. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to continue that till the day I die. <laughs> my friend Chrissy posted something from Priscilla um, Shriver. I love her. I love her. She's Tony Evans' daughter, and she's freaking awesome. But she was like, listen, perfection is not the goal. Because you will be paralyzed and ineffective because you're trying to seek perfection. And so you do nothing. And it's a trap and it's a lie from the enemy. And I know people, they're not friends, but people that I know as acquaintances, and I, that I have heard speak about perfection. That's it. We do perfection and that's it. Period. And I'm like, you are setting yourself up for failure and everybody around you. It is a misery and a trap from the enemy, from the pit of hell. You will not get that. We should be constantly growing and maturing and moving forward in, in our walk with God. And that should be evident by the changes that God's doing in us. Anyway, I'm just really blessed that my parents led me in the ways of the Lord and I didn't like going to church growing up because it was boring sometimes and whatever but we went to camp we did all the things and at some point well like I said I was saved when I was four I accepted Christ but at some point the realization of that faith became mine and not my parents and that's the transition, I'm sorry, allergies. That's the transition that a lot of Christians don't have or know how to walk in and they don't know what that even looks like and maybe they don't even care. They're like, I don't wanna do that, that's boring. I'm glad I'm saved, but I have no desire, right? The, the, the line is, if you have been saved by God, there should be such a gratitude that you want to know him more. And if you haven't had that experience with him, then why did you ask him into your heart? Was it just in case, just to be safe? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I pray you have fruit in your life. And if you're listening and going, I don't know what you're talking about, listen. There's a God, real, who made everything, the universe, and he breathed life into you. And he knew the plans he had for you before the foundations of the earth. He knew the hairs on your head and the tears that you would cry. And he has them jarred and labeled and numbered. He knit you together special in your mother's womb. And there's nobody like you. And you are his baby. And he wants to bind you to himself in a relationship, and the only way that happens is that someone pays your penalty and my penalty because he's perfect. There has to be a payment for our sin. But guess what? You don't have to pay it. Jesus paid it for you. So you say, thank you, Jesus, come into my life. And guess what? Your name is sealed in the Lamb's Book of Life and you have eternity with God and he wants to know you in a relationship, the God of the universe. He has the ability to have all of his attention just on you and just on me because he's everywhere all the time. So when I speak to him, he's all mine. And when you speak to him, he's all yours. He adores you. That's what I'm talking about. That oh, should spark something that makes you want to know him more and when you know him more your life should not look the same as it did in the past okay that's all i'm saying <laughs> it was a lot i was a little weighty but i love you like a crazy person <sighs> listen i hope you have a good day be good to one another like i always say you are one of the one another's right don't forget to be good to yourself. Deep breath. I love you. And I mean it, peanut. Mwah.